what's going on everybody it's poodle back with another madden ultimate team video guys and today i'm going to be going over madden 22 rookie premieres so we're going to be going over a few things guys so stay tuned we're going to be ranking the best rookie premieres to take because rookie premieres not like it used to be if you had taken trevor lawrence in madden 21 that does not mean you're getting trevor lawrence in madden 22 you still have a choice so unlike other years what i like about this is that you get to see their stats first and go accordingly because in years past you take the names you like like clyde edwards alaire he gets a horrible speed he's not usable and then the other guy that was usable, he didn't do, right? So, I'm going to explain how they work at the end of the video. Well, once we get through the rankings, I'll explain how they work. I'll break them down and give you my best advice on who to take. I'm going to rank them first and then tell you what combinations you can take. Because you can't get all 10, right? There's a one token one, a two, a three, a five. You know, like how that works. So, we're going to go through all that. There's a whole screen going over everything. So, let's go through the rankings. I'll tell you my quick reasoning why I don't want to spend too long on them. And then we'll get into it. Now, before we get into the video, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, guys likes help out the channel a lot so we can get back into the swing of the youtube game again going to madden 22 that would greatly help so can we get 25 likes in this video that would be greatly appreciated boys if you if, you're, if you watch the video and you're loyal hit the like button subscribe as always guys let's get the channel growing again it's been a long time since we had a big momentum boost like we had you know back in madden 21 early so let's get that going again and of course if you want to follow me on twitter to keep up to date with everything i do head down below to the description there should be a link there now let's get into it so first Coming in in last place is Trevor Lawrence. Now, many people may ask, how would the generational quarterback talent be last? It's simple. He's a QB. QB is probably, arguably, one of the worst positions you want a nat quarterback, a uh, nat player at in general. Um, cornerbacks, you change. Safeties, you change. Linebackers. Quarterbacks, you typically find one you like that's meta, and you kind of stick with him. And especially early in the year when you get a you get a nat Mahomes or Brady to start if you pre-ordered the game, the last thing you probably want is a Trevor Lawrence card, am I right? I mean... He's not horrible. 88 throw power is good. I mean, the throwing accuracy. He's going to be a well-rounded quarterback. Unless you didn't pre-order the game for whatever reason. and you But you did all the brick premieres, which just don't correlate that well. If you're a guy that plays that late, you're probably playing again. But if that's the case, take him. But I think he's the worst one. Not fast. Not going to be meta. And even if, he can't be powered up, right? So it's not like a guy you're going with. Coming in next, number nine is Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, honestly, it was hard putting him that here because I do actually like getting a Nat guard, but at the end of the day, it is a guard. So you probably don't want to be taking him because there's a lot of good options. Like this is probably the best. This is the best crop work premieres we've ever had. Not bad. Mid 80s pass blocking, run blocking, but overall, not gonna be a great option being a left guard. You know, there's better options here. Next is Christian Barmore. Now, the only thing with him, guys, is that I don't like the position he's at, but at the same time, it is a depth position, which always gets an increase for Nat players. If you're if it's a depth position like defensive tackle, ends, anything like that, players you can move around on the line, I consider them players to be higher value just because these are Nat. I mean, odds are you get a new defensive tackle or vice versa going on pretty soon, but you can put him at DT2, you can put him anywhere else, you can use him for chems. Um, so I don't I don't mind him. He's okay. Coming in at number I believe what we did, we did 10, 9, 8, 7. Jalen Phillips, outside linebacker for the Dolphins. He's actually not bad. He's super fast. But, of course, his block shot is not great. His power move is not great. And his finesse move is decent. Going to be a pretty good day one outside linebacker. It's just the other options are better. Um, not horrible. You can pop him out into a zone or a man. I mean, he's fast enough to probably play it. Although, he might not have the greatest coverage there. But, it's not bad. Coming number six, Micah Parsons. Had this been any other Madden, this Micah Parsons card probably would have been super high. 88 speed. 88 excel with 84 hit power on a day one middle linebacker is unheard of i used to have user linebackers at 82 speed day one but of course it is if, if they fix that linebackers can animate and play the game michael parsons instantly a top four option probably but because of the way madden is i can't put him too high because people typically just run safeties here next we have Najee harris now the only reason i don't have him higher is because saquon barkley is going to be out with a superstar mvp that comes with abilities at an 88 or 89 speed otherwise Najee harris is probably one of the best day one speed backs we've gotten Last year, he would have been faster than Christian McCaffrey. Derrick Henry would have been right up there with almost Marcus Allen-esque uh, back in Madden 20. But he gets 87 speed, 88 excel, 85 change of direction, and 83 truck with 84 carrying day one and 77 catching. Probably one of the most well-rounded backs you can pretty much get for free if you did Ricky Ramirez. Now, again, like I said, if there was no Saquon Barkley, I think Najee would be top four in this list. But because there is, there are going to be better options for most people that you can get off right off the auction with abilities pre-built in. JC Horn coming in, I believe, at number four, if not mistaken. JC Horn is a solid cornerback. Now, his stats coverage wise aren't the greatest compared to like the Ramseys and everything. But 89 speed, 89 excel is nothing to joke around about, especially with Lance Allworth, Tyree Kill, um, some other rig premier cards that we're going to get over soon. And just a lot of speed guys this year. So JC Horn going to be able to stick with them with man and press. Of course, his zone and play rec could be better, but that jumping, it's, he's just an athletic beast. 
Kind of reminds me of those Denzel Ward cards back in the earlier uh, few years ago when he was first getting into the league. Just super athletic. Didn't give him the best coverage stats. Decent man. But he's going to be good day one. Next, we have Trevon Morig. Uh, guys, 90 speed user. Just like Isaiah Simmons last year. You get a fast user safety to start the year and you're set. Again, usering felt a little slow, but that was the beta. So take that with a grain of salt. Things should be fixed in that aspect. But he's not just like a McCourty, right? Not just like, you know, athleticism maybe, but no hit power. He has 86 hit power, 81 zone with 90 speed, 90 excel, 81 man, 84 pursuit. Trevon Morig's one of the best, probably going to be the best safety in the game speed wise. And if he's not, that's impressive because someone's gonna, maybe Isaiah Simmons, right? Um, but he's going to be really good. Definitely recommend taking him. Kyle Pitts is one of my favorite on the list, guys. 88 speed. Tight ends are different, right? A game-breaking tight Just like in fantasy football, right? If you get a game-breaking tight end, you have an advantage over everyone else because of the lack of tight ends. If you have it In real life, when you have a great tight end like a Travis Kelsey, you have an advantage over everyone else because tight ends are some of the hardest positions to cover because they're played by linebackers and slower people. So if you have a game-breaking tight end, they're just mismatched, and you can't get corners off the wide receivers, right? And if you do game plan that way, then it just messes up everything. So same thing with Mud. If you get a guy like Kyle Pitts with 88 speed day one, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. George Kittle usually starts with an 82 speed. If you're lucky, Waller gets like an 84. Kyle Pitts with an 88 with 84 catching, and he has 80 medium route running and 82 short running threshold already with 85 spec. There's going to be a card that you can rock for at least the first month or even two because speed of tight end doesn't come that frequently. The only way you're going to get speed of tight end is if A, we get a Darren Waller upgrade or we get an Evan Ingram upgrade. And more than likely in the first month of Madden, there is no season yet, right? I mean, starting in August, so we have a whole month without the season starting, so there won't probably be a current day player upgrade unless they get like a Superstar MVP card or one of those launch promos. Otherwise, Kyle Pitts could last you a month or two easily. And then finally, guys, at first, we got Jamar Chase. This is the craziest Rick Premier card of all time. This is one of the craziest day one cards of all time. At 86 overall with 91 speed. He's going to be the fastest wide receiver that we can pretty much assume at this point. Faster than Tyree Kill. Day one is Jamar Chase, which is really kind of weird because if you look at... Jamar Chase only ran like a 4-3, I believe. Um, I don't know at what point he should be faster than Tyree Kill. At a lower overall, it doesn't really make sense to me, but I'll take it. Super cool. Uh, great size, great physicality. He's going to get 91 speed, 92 jumping. With 83 deep route running, 81 catching. This is your deep guy. This is your deep guy. Um, he's going to be auctionable. So he's, I'll, I'll explain later, but there's going to be, you're going to be able to get him off the auction block. So if you didn't get any Rick Premier tokens, don't think this video isn't for you guys. You can still buy these cards. Some people will take the auctionable version for more tokens and sell them. So, I mean, obviously, Best Buy might be buying them day one. We'll get into all that. But Jamar Chase, guys, best one by far. 91 speed is just different. You know what 91 speed is in August? We Tyree Kill breaks the game with an 89 speed. Jamar Chase can be different. If he's as physical as I think with the height advantage and the whole next gen, like bigger guys get better animations. If they can really, if that all goes as planned, guys, it is going to be a crazy, crazy card. I mean, it already is going to be a crazy card, but it has potential to be even better than we think. But now let's explain them in depth here. So, the Rookie Premier Program. If you complete all 10 Rookie Premier players last year, Man 21, you can get either of the following combinations. Now, pause. No, you cannot still do Rookie Premieres. Just to get that out there. So, if you got all 10, you can get one Nat High Overall player, which is, I believe, one token, two Nat High Overall Rick Premier players, which I believe is two tokens, and then one actual High Overall player, which I believe is five tokens. So, to explain this, guys, there's going to be a set, right? There is there is a five total sets. There's going to be one that's called the Nat High Overall that only quick sells for one-fourth of their training. So, let's say they go for a 1,000 training, typically. This card will only only cost one token to get him. It'll be Nat, like Jamar Chase, but he'll only go for 250 training if you want to quick sell him. Then there's going to be the second slot. It costs two tokens each. Um, it'll be a Nat High Overall Rick Premier player, but these go for half quick sell. So, they'll go for 500 training. Then there's going to be the one auctionable High Overall player, which goes for five. You can auction him. I'll get into that. Or you can go with just two auctionable High Overall Rick Premier players. So you can just get two of them, sell them right away. If you're a guy that doesn't want to, if you're a guy like that gets God Squad's day one, uh, you can just go ahead, take them all auctionable, sell the second one, maybe keep Jamar Chase, because that's going to be a part of a God Squad, probably. So you go, what do I get for my Rookie Premier collectibles? When you log into Madden 22, you will have the option of how to use your Rookie Premier collectibles for your Rookie Premier players. Here's the current breakdown of how the sets will work. One Rookie Premier collectible, one Nat High overall player you can get. You can only do this one time. Then there's two Rookie Premier collectibles for one Nat High overall with half quick sell training two times and then there's a rookie uh, five rp collectibles one auctionable high you can do this two times these packs will be fantasy packs so let me get let me clarify for you guys here if you have here's my best recommendation I'll, I'll make a better video on this in depth when the game comes out if you have if you have 10 total tokens 
in my opinion, you want to get the you want to get as many as you can, guys, because you want Pitts, you want J.C. Horn probably, you want Pitts. I'm uh, sorry, you want Pitts, you want Horn, you want Jamar Chase, um, you want Trevon Morig, and you may or may not want Michael Parsons. You may want Najee Harris. There's a lot of them. So I'd recommend you take the one auctionable, the two the two two tokens and then the one token that'll complete you for 10 so that way you have a total of four players and like i said i would personally take jamar chase trevon morig um kyle pitts bare minimum those three you need and you could decide between jc horn Najee harris mike parsons although i think jc horn might be the best of the three but here's the thing if you get 10 tokens guys i would recommend you probably take jamar chase as your auctionable if you get 10 tokens i'll explain this so jamar chase would probably be the most expensive of the bunch being a 91 speed he's gonna be pretty much meta now i think guys day one he may not sell for as much as you think because he's gonna everyone's gonna be doing the same thing but if you hold them for like a few days or even a week once weekend league opens everyone's gonna want jamar chase you can't get him anymore it was just rick ramirez he may skyrocket so just quick investment tip there now second second point here in my personal opinion is this if you only get five let's say you only did five rookie premieres right you only have five tokens you can take one auctionable player or you can take the two the two twos and the one i recommend you don't take an auctionable there because i don't think the coins of jamar chase is worth not getting pits or any of those other guys so here's the thing let's say you have five tokens you can get one fourth one one fourth guy and then two one half guys of training i'd recommend you take jamar chase as your one fourth guy in that case and why is that why would you take your favorite or the best one as the lowest guy because think about it you're not going to quick sell jamar chase 91 speed he's probably on your team for at least a month or two again so by the time you can quick sell him and not want him one fourth of his training isn't worth it i'd recommend you take a guy like jc horn or trevon morig or Najee harris or pitts as your half training because you won't have them as long as jamar chase so let's say in like two three weeks jc horn's no longer good for you because you have dion and you have charles woodson all these guys you can go ahead and just quick sell him 500 training or whatever he'll be worth is worth a lot at that time now jamar chase you might not sell till late september early october so he can even be a fourth corner with that speed a fourth wide receiver so by the time you sell him it's not worth it so if you only get if you only have five tokens i'd recommend if you have 10 you take jamar uh you take jamar auctionable if you have anywhere between five or ten you can still do that option in my opinion if you only have five take jamar if, you, if you're not going to take if you're not taking any auctionable players make sure if you're not going to take any auctionable players right at all I'd recommend you take Jamar as your one coking guy because he's going to be the one you keep the longest. That's just my opinion. But guys, that's about it for the video. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy today's video. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, boys. Let's start, let's start spamming the subs, getting some new people in here, build some momentum. And of course, guys, liking helps so much. So if you guys made it this far, make sure you always hit that like button. Can we get 25 likes in this video, guys? There was a time when we got 1,000 likes. So let's see if we can build this back up, get some momentum going. And comment down below. Let me know who your favorite rookie premiere is. I want to see what the, in my opinion, it's Jamar Chase and the Pitts everyone's different so let me know that's about it enjoy the rest of your day i'm out peace